My name is Alex, we're here at my mansion in Miami, and I'm a 22-year-old self-made millionaire. Let's check it. How much money did you make last year? 4.5 million. million. Yeah. Damn. I've cleared seven figures within like six months. What's your highest level of education? High school. Damn. <laughs> okay. At the time I was working at Dunkin' Donuts, making $2,000 a month. And when I finally had my biggest payout, 30K for the month, never showed up ever again. Damn. My dad, him seeing me just locked in a room in the closet in the house doing nothing. From his perspective, I'm a total failure. I'm telling you, the sacrifices that I did is I cut off every single person I knew in my life. It was very hard explaining to him how me doing nothing is actually doing something. My name is Aaron Van Campen. I travel around the world learning and meeting up with multi-millionaires. Hit subscribe to join me and check out my free Discord community that just started. It's in the link in the description. It's for people that watch videos like this and want to achieve greatness, want to network, and just be the best version of themselves and be able to collaboratively think. What's going on, buddy? What's going on? Nice to meet you. That's good, bro. I came from like a middle class family. My dad came in a raft. My mom came in a plain hidden. Growing up was just dumb working, literally. Seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Since they worked so hard, they got to the point where they were able to save us some money, buy a house, and it kind of put us to that middle class life. But the only thing I did struggle with was like my family's ambition towards who I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. I wanted me to go to college, get a degree, do all of these things. And that was kind of like a battle probably for like three, four years. And so I finally started having results with what I'm doing. Okay, so we got the whips. So this is my Lambo. I have a Huracan 610. I have it with wing, exhaust, tune, lowering kit, wheels. Which one did you get first, the G-Wagon or the Lambo? The Lambo, the Lambo, the Lambo, yeah. So which is your daily driver? The G-Wagon, it's way more comfortable than the Lambo. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. This one was 250, and then that one was like 200. Gotcha. What was your first car? Probably like a little hatchback. At the time, I was working at Dunkin' Donuts, and yeah, it's, it's <laughs> crazy, right? What was your favorite part of work, working at Dunkin' Donuts? Nothing, I didn't like anything. <laughs> <laughs> I love Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> what I would make in a year, almost two years, I just made in a month. So I had all of my monthly expenses covered for nearly two years because I had nothing. That's when I realized this is it. Did I you do. quit Dunkin' Donuts right then and there? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so this is my closet. This is bigger than my bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> what is kind of your favorite thing to purchase? I like watches. I like being comfortable. Yeah. I hate like how people get all gucci up. So this is a Richard Mill. Cost me like 200K. This when is. did you get your first luxury watch? When I got like a, a big payout. Probably got like a seven, eight thousand dollar Rolex. Because you didn't even mention that you like shoes, but you got a uh, lot of them. Yeah, I don't really wear them though, honestly. I'm more of like a slides kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me why there's a shotgun here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a fucking shock on yeah, the bathroom floor. So I, I have like eight, ten guns around the whole entire house. Do you think you're like an action movie star or something? I like love everywhere, it, yeah. in case there's a zombie apocalypse, <laughs> fucking shotgun. You, you never know, bro. It's showtime. Wait a second. <laughs> Wait, That's a, not yours, is it? This is a universal spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Who's your celebrity crush? I'm probably Megan Fox. Megan Fox? Yeah, yeah Megan I'd Fox. say she's probably my top three. Yeah, she, That's why the brush is still universal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing what your parents wanted you to do? My dad wanted me to be a cop, my mom yeah, a school teacher. So no, I'm not doing what they wanted at all. <laughs> my dad, I mean, you know, OG Cuban guy, comes here on a raft from Cuba. He was six days at sea, and all he knows how to do is work. Him seeing me just locked in a room in the closet in the house doing nothing. From his perspective, I'm a total failure. It was very hard explaining to him how me doing nothing is actually doing something. But I didn't talk to my dad for like two years, bro, even when I was having results. They just thought it was pure luck. And so I just showed him like, you know, bank account balance. That's something very personal to me. But my dad was a very tough challenge that I had to battle every every single day for three years until I actually started having results. What's the most overrated thing about being rich? Money buys happiness temporarily. It really is lonely at the top. Now, there's really not a lot of people that you could just chill with while you're doing your thing. It gets to the point where you just can't buy happiness. I had a large group of friends in the past, right? And when I got into my whole entire niche, everybody called me crazy. Literally for my life from that point forward, I absolutely knew nobody. Even my family, my parents, there was like three, four months I didn't talk to my sister. It was a huge sacrifice to me personally. Just, it was me versus me every single day. I just kept doubling down on myself. All of the money that I got, it just kept going back into me. Although, how many hours a day do you sit in this chair? About like eight, 10 hours a day. Eight, 10 hours a day. Yeah, yeah, Damn. Yeah. How much was this whole setup? Like seven, 8,000. How much do you make a day with this setup? 20, 25K a day. I have an uncle that he's very wealthy. And yeah. just kind of see him walking around with like this power in a way, like he just kind of literally moves shit around by just yeah. like <laughs> saying stuff. Uh, he had a driver, he had securities all the time. And I'm just like, whoa. How do I get into that? That's kind of what drove me into it. Yeah, and what about now? What motivates you to get up and keep going? I, I look to my next door neighbor, you know who, and I'm like, I'm not even a quarter of where he is. So. Yeah. Big boss. Bro, I'm just checking everybody in your neighborhood now. Enjoying the new whip? All right, yo, 
Who just came up to us in the car was Neil Alwani. We did a video with him a couple weeks ago. It's honestly a solid one. I'll link it above or wherever or check it out after, but definitely worth the watch. Yeah, so I'm boys with Neil. I'll play poker with every single one of these guys. And youngest guy that I know that he, he's killing it. I put myself in this neighborhood. I put myself next to people that I'm the smallest fish in the room. That's what motivates me. These guys are inviting me to go play out poker Tuesday at 11 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's like, what are you guys doing on a Tuesday? Like not doing anything. Going up, going up. So, you know, they've obviously reached a level where they've made it. Most of us, myself included, cannot afford to just go buy a mansion in a community like this, which is why I created my Discord. There will be all like-minded people in there striving for greatness, pooling resources, offering feedback to one another, as well as live events with me and entrepreneurs, guests doing live calls, all sorts of stuff. Honestly, it's gonna be super awesome and I hope to see you all there. The link is below. Did you think you would ever be in this position? I did, not so fast, and I didn't know what niche. I've seen my parents work 12 hours a day all week. The, the drive and the work ethic is in there for me. I just was trying to figure out what niche do I put it into, how do I figure it out, and how do I excel? A lot of extra rooms here. Yeah, I have a lot of rooms. Are you ever planning on uh, filling these rooms up? Yeah, so I'm gonna get a, I'm thinking of getting like a crazy exotic animal, and I'm gonna have it in the room <laughs> it's downstairs. Not what I meant at all. <laughs> Okay. And then this is the master yeah. bedroom area. Yeah, Are you building it. your own bed? No, I'm not building <laughs> I have a five, seven, five bedroom, seven bathroom. I probably use like two, three of the bathrooms, but not all of them. So mm -hmm. the bed that I have upstairs that I'm building, I'm gonna put it here. So it's a California king, but- Just a big bed. Yeah. Just a bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> it's a party house, bro. Party house, okay. I want a party. What's the worst advice someone's ever given you? Don't invest in yourself. Somebody told me not to work a lot. That makes no sense to me. You're gonna outwork yourself. And that was total bullshit, honestly. <laughs> if you're working 12 hours a day, seven days a week, versus somebody that's working five hours a day, four hours a week, you're ahead of them by double the time. I feel like I undervalued myself and I didn't appreciate it. All the work that I put in, I you know should reward myself. I haven't gotten on vacation, bro, ever. So when did you start this? Probably four and a half, five years ago. One of the most high reward things that you could have gotten at the time and the risk to reward was a lot larger than putting into the, let's say, other industries. What do you do for a living? Straight forks. That's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I do. Okay, yes, he trades Forex and I know there's gonna be so many people in the comment section firing off messages about, you know, scams and whatnot, but Alex is the real deal and he talks us through what Forex is and really kind of shows us how he does what he does. And he kind of calls out some people that don't actually do it, which is pretty funny. Forex is short for foreign exchange. You're, you're basically betting if the market's gonna go up or down. So it can be Euro, USD. The Euro is gonna get stronger, the dollar is gonna get weaker or vice versa. You're not actually buying the tangible Euro or buying the dollar and, and exchanging it. Like that, that's just a mission. You're basically betting on price. The market goes up and down. All you're trying to figure out is when to click buy at the right time and when to click sell at the right time. It's literally odds. It's, it's literally 50-50. It's gonna go up or go down and all you're doing is building a simple conclusion on why it's gonna go up versus down. It's very simple, right? You wanna swim with the current. So if the current's going east, you're trying to go east. There's no reason why you should be going against the current. That's what I do. I look for pairs that are going up. Let's say you're a fisherman. The only fish you're trying to catch are big tuna. In order for you to catch a big tuna, you gotta be deep sea. You gotta have a big Viking boat. If you're not on a big boat or if you're not at 500 feet, you simply can't catch a tuna. You don't go fish for it. You go to another spot where all those requirements are met. Hurricanes always come around the same time. Winter always comes around the same time. It's a cycle. It's the same thing with the markets. So I have a list of requirements. When they're all met, I take a trade. If they don't meet, I don't take a trade. When you do it for long enough, you figure out the same pattern. You start seeing the same thing again and again and again, and then you just wait for the same thing to happen again. You take the trade, set and forget. <laughs> so set and forget is like my trademark is in a way. A lot of people when they enter a trade, they don't hold it long enough. All you gotta do is just set and forget. What's a stereotype about your industry that's true? A lot of these gurus, they pay for their lifestyle, jewelry, watches, cars, by selling courses. That's just like the most stereotypical thing about this whole entire industry. 99% of them are faking it. Forex gets a lot of hate, bro, because a lot of these bullshit guys selling it. Some of the ads that I see are super cringe. You know, these guys getting out of Lambos, they're like marketing, oh, buy my super class today. And get on a Zoom and show me what is good. If you can't do that shit, just don't 
talk to me, bro. I'm a trader. I just trade, do my thing, and I chill. But at the same time, okay, yeah, I'll make 100K this week, 200K. And then what do I do? I'm just alone in my house all day, bored. So I rather engage with some people, teach them a little bit, and it's just kind of keeps me active versus just doing nothing all day. Alex is in the Glow Gang community. So if you want to ask him more questions, learn from me, learn from him, learn from each other, hit the link in the description and join our community. I deposited all of my money into trading and I lost it all. And there were some times where that shit would hurt really, really bad, where I would punch a hole in the wall or break a keyboard. And I kind of had to experience those losses that I went through. And that gifted me a car, a uh, G37. And then I sold it, had a lot of it saved up. All of that money into a trading account, uh, which is 30K. Bro, I lost it all in like three months. Damn. Yeah. Did you funny. tell your dad? No. I oh, not, God. Does he know ever to this day? No, he doesn't. Oh, no. He doesn't even talk English. Have you seen yeah. this? <laughs> Can you tell me about the worst investment you've ever made? The worst investment was a coin similar to Dogecoin. All of these influencers were marketing it, and it was going to be the new big thing. So I invested around a quarter mil into this coin, and after a week and a half, after they start pumping it, the value of my coin went up to about 18, 19 million dollars. As soon as I'm ready to hit withdraw, a platform says that's not available. So I have to wait into a certain date. And right before that day came, all of my funds went right back down to zero, where I basically am down 98% of my investment. These coins that are just being marketed with no purpose behind it, there's no project plan. If they're not, if they're not completing with their roadmap, then it's not gonna happen. What did you learn about yourself during your rise to success? You never know when the up is coming. You never know when the down is coming. You never know how high you're gonna go up. You never know how hard you're gonna go down. The thing that I learned the most is you can't you can't be a bitch about it because then that just shows you're not built for this shit, you know? Yeah. I've learned to not be emotional with anything. How many years and how many hours yeah, did it take so you to get to your level of expertise? It took me about two and a half years to even see a piece of it back. So I was two and a half years losing consistently. It's every single day locked in a little closet in my parents house watching the markets every single hour i can i'm telling you the sacrifices that i did is i cut off every single person i knew in my life life-changing opportunities they don't come every single day so not everybody would be rich everybody would have everything to do what i do you gotta have patience and you gotta have the balls of steel to not give a shit when you lose and just keep going forward everything that i wanted to achieve when i would be 30 I've already surpassed it and I'm nowhere near satisfied. I feel like I haven't done anything. Nobody's gonna tell you when it's gonna come. Like, oh, you're 30 days away, you're two weeks away, you're one day away. Your success is just up in the air with a huge question mark. It's just a never ending journey and you just have to keep going forward. If you wanna continue to meet and learn from multi-millionaires, hit subscribe, check out the community, and you're gonna wanna watch this video to meet twins who grew up on a farm and now have built a company worth close to a billion dollars.